Hey everybody, and welcome back. As you may have noticed, we are still in our away from home recording setup, so still just using the, the microphone on my laptop and recording on my laptop screen, so doing the best we can with what we got. Um, any videos put out after this one, and I, I should be back home with my normal setup, so no worries there. Um, today we're going to be going over a, another way that we can kind of control exposure and, and owner, not really ownership directly, but more of exposure and lineup variations, which let's go ahead and hop into it, and then we can start kind of talking about what, let's take that exposure off for now. Okay, so if we take a look at this lineup, and, and I know we're jumping right in without explaining what we're doing, but that's because it, it'll be easier to, to understand once we take a look at this. So if we look at this first lineup, we have Eric Bledsoe, John Morant, McCollum, Brogdon, George Hero, Turner, Achua, and Dang. If we look at our second lineup, it's almost entirely the exact same players, right? Now, there's one way that we've kind of dealt with the repeated players like that but it involves combining um, max exposure and an exposure strategy called after each exposure strategy. And if you're not familiar with that, please go back and check out that video um, going over exposures because we do walk through it there. But in short, what it is, is it calculates the exposure for each player in totality after each lineup is ran. So if we look at this and we set max exposure to 50%, we run one lineup, every single player on lineup one has an exposure of 100% because they're on one lineup out of a total of one lineups. So they can't be used anymore. That second lineup is now going to have to consist of players entirely not on lineup one. So after we've run two lineups, every player on lineup one has an ownership of 50% because they're on lineup one of two lineups, and every player on lineup two has an exposure of 50% because they're on lineup one of two lineups. So none of the players from lineups one and two can be used because their max exposure is 50% and they're already at it. Lineup three has to be a third set of players because now the two first lineups have already been used at their, their max exposure and we don't have a third lineup completed yet, so they're still calculating one of two. Once that third lineup is made, and now everybody that's been used is on lineups one of three, which is 33%, which makes them now eligible to go on a new lineup because their max exposure is 50% and they're only at 33. So if their exposure at any given time is less than their max, they can be put on a lineup that would then put them past their max. But once they're past it, they cannot be put on another lineup until they've dropped all the way below it. So if it's even, 50-50, it can't be put on another one. If it's at 49%, it can, okay? So how this is going to differ from that is it's simply going to be utilizing the max repeating player function. And so if we take a look at here, you know, we can see our same players are on all 10 lineups, just like every other time we've ran lineups without any parameters. But what we can do about that is we can run this optimizer.setMaxRepeatingPlayers, okay? And what that's going to do, and that, that comes in after you've, you know, instantiated your optimizer, you've loaded your players from CSV or from player pool, then you can put this rule on your optimizer that says, hey, for every consecutive lineup, you can only repeat five players from the previous one. Now, that's not saying... You know, you, it's not carrying over any further than the immediately next created lineup. So if we look at these, our first lineup, we have how many repeated on lineup two? Dang's not there. Achua's not there. I think everybody else is. Paul George isn't there. So we get, what, three new people out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're repeating six players here. Okay, so what this is going to do is say we can only repeat five of them. So if we run that again, we should have a slightly different second lineup. And I'm pretty sure Lonzo Ball was not on that first one, so we may have already got it. Yep. So our fantasy points, 403.2 for lineup two. Still 403.2. Oh, that was for our first one. 
So our second one now, you can already see differences. We have Scotty Barnes, we have Lonzo Ball. Um, so we've already made an impact by only allowing five. And now everything we just did from first lineup to second is now completely forgotten. And now as we're going from lineup two to lineup three, we say only five players from lineup two can be used on lineup three. Okay. Now it's not saying you have to use five. It's saying the maximum that can be used is five. So while that only plays a part in lineup one to two, then completely erase it, lineup two to three, completely erase it, three to four, completely erase it, so on and so forth, it does allow us a little bit more variation, especially combining something like this with max exposure or even ownership. So now we're getting into all the different pieces of the puzzle that we can use that's going to help get us a bit bigger variety with our, our lineup construction. So just by doing that, we went from having six players on all 10 lineups, just by setting max repeating players to five, we still have Ja Morant, Miles Turner on all of them. So they are one of the five that get picked every single time. So their price to fantasy point value must be insane here because never once are they dropped off for somebody else. But then you can see we still have a little bit better of a spread till we get down to the threes, twos, and ones. And we went from having 21 players total to 28 players total. So now we have seven additional players thrown in here, all probably pretty similar points wise. Like 389, 35 is our lowest scoring one here versus what is it, 400? So yeah, so only an 11 point difference from our, our worst lineup on each of them, which I mean, projections. I mean, if, if you could just get a perfect projection every day, you'd win every single match you ever play, right? So projections give you an idea of how players are going to do, um, but it's not an exact science. It's more of a, or in relation to how they normally perform. So combining that with some other things can allow you to get a good combination of well-performing players rather than one, you know, five to seven player group that's on every lineup and you're just cycling out those last two players um, every iteration. So we're going to do the same thing we did for ownership. We're going to go through here and keep dropping that value and we're going to see how that um, that spread increases on players that we're using. So now dropping it down so we can only repeat four players. Now suddenly nobody's on 10 lineups. Miles Turner's on nine, John Morant's on eight. And then we slowly start coming down here to our twos and ones. And now we bump up to 29 total players used. So that's just a couple more players in the mix that could have a, a good game and be our, you know, the player that breaks the slate and wins us the, the Millie maker. And that's, I mean, that's the deal, right? That's what everybody's trying to do. So we, we come up with our own ways of projecting how players are going to do. And then we try and find our ideal combination of forced variation across those projections that's going to get us the, our best odds at getting that right lineup. So now with only allowing, what are we on four, three, only allowing three to repeat, we still have John Morant on eight of them. So he's still going to be very highly sought after with our optimizer. And then we have McCollum at six, Turner at six. Then we start dropping down and see, we get all the way down here to Steven Adams before he hits someone with only two. And now we're up to 32 total players. So you'll want to be looking, I mean, some of our players down here only used once. I mean, Paul George, Brandon Ingram, Anthony Edwards, Jeremy Grant. Those are all guys that can have big games, right? And if we come up here and look at our first run, you know, none of those guys are in here. I guess we had Paul George on two of them. But uh, that, that's, I mean, that's a good example of how we're getting that variation because using 21 players, I mean, yeah, it's possible we have the best lineup in that group, but I, you know, by the numbers, it's not very likely, right? So that, that's, that's kind of how you want to think of this is trying to find the best combination to get us that spread. And, and you can see if we start only allowing two players to repeat, it's going to get a lot more varied really quickly. Yep. See now Morant and Brogdon can only be on five. Um, and it, it's going to go down pretty quick down to 38 players. 
And then if we only allow one to repeat every time, yeah, John Morant's down to only four. And look at all these players we have now, 53 different players now. Now we're bringing in players like, you know, Bam Adebayo, Nas Reed, DeMar DeRozan. Again, these guys can have big games and break a slate because they're usually not priced terribly bad. But these are all players we'd be missing out on if we allowed that repeated chunk to occur on pretty much every single lineup. And just like before, this can be coupled with exposure. So let's say this one, for example, where we had 866555. Let's do this, but let's put a max exposure at 40% and see how that changes things. All right, and this was our three repeating players. So let's just do a quick refresh on what we had. So just big picture numbers, we had 32 different players and we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different players at 40% exposure or higher. And now if we come all the way down here, we are at 29 different players and we just have a bunch of them on four lineups and then a couple threes, twos, and only three ones. So 29 players with exposure limits versus 32. So in that case, we actually use less players um, because we are allowed to focus more heavily on some of them that were being repeated and keeping them right up at that 40% exposure mark. AKA, it was easier to keep only our good players on four full lineups um, without repeating them because we had 10 lineups, right? So just the, you know, it can be a little goofy if you're, have never really dove into the math before on how it's solving all of these problems. Um, but that's definitely something that we can use. And, you know, like I, I like to say, another tool in the toolbox or in your tool belt, there is no one size fits all solution. Um, but these are all different methods that we can utilize that are built right in to the PyDFS lineup optimizer. You don't have to customize anything unless you want to build out some sort of custom ownership function that looks at points. Projected points, projected points um, versus ownership, some sort of ratio, and use that for your scoring mechanism rather than just projected points. I'd, you know, if you have a more complex system like that, by all means, go for it. However, right now we're just kind of going over the tools themselves, and, and we might do a little bit more complex, um, maybe game out some different ways to combine all of these different settings. Maybe use a, an actual day, days worth of results. Um, and see if we can't find ownerships for that day somewhere or what the projected ownerships were for that day at least. And then we'll, we can kind of go through it and, and look at what the best lineups were for the day versus what we're getting with these different combinations and kind of see if there's maybe a sweet spot with some of them or if it's just kind of day by day, it, it's randomized and doesn't really matter. Just whatever you feel like doing. But that's going to be it for today. Um, huge shout out to everyone on the Patreon. Um, like I said in the last video, I know it's been a while. I guess it hasn't been a while anymore, but we went, uh, I don't know, over 100 days there without a new video. Um, had a lot of stuff going on off screen that was keeping me from being able to record and have the time to do this, but we're getting back into the swing of things now. So thanks for everyone sticking with me. I'm looking forward to putting out some more content for everybody. And thank you for your time as always, and I will see you in the next one.